Hello students, we will now see the fourth machine independent feature which is program blocks. Like you saw in the previous uh, assembly program, the way the instructions are written in the source program, in the same way the object program is also written. That is in the same order the object program is also written. But program blocks gives a flexibility to the user that is you need not write the object program like in the same order that is written in the source program you can change the order in the object program this is why because there are some instructions that refer to each other right so the instructions that refer to each other will be placed in one single block and all the data areas are placed in a separate block so this allows flexibility and this also allows program readability so we make use of program blocks so as this says allows the generated machine instructions and the data to appear in the object program in a different order that is in the object program it need not be in the same order okay so you can change the order using program blocks now how do we implement this program blocks this is implemented using an using an assembler directive by name use that is the syntax of use is use followed by the name of the block Okay, so far the assembly program that you saw, he had no use, right? So the entire assembly program was considered as one single block. But if you have to divide the instructions into several blocks, you have to make use of this use directive, okay? And we have three kinds of blocks here, guys. One is a default block. I'll be showing it in the next slide. But then let me just brief about it. There is a default block. There is a data block. And there is a BLCK block okay and uh, all the executable instructions that usually come in the beginning will be placed in the default block if there is no use statements then obviously the entire program is considered as a single block okay now as i mentioned here you have three blocks in the program that i'll be explaining to you one is default block which contains all the executable instructions and c data block which contains data areas that are less in length. For example, RESW1, which is very less in length, right? Then you have CLBKS, which has data areas that consist of larger blocks of memory. So, for example, you can have RESB4096, which is quite large, right? So, all those data areas can be placed under CBLKS, okay? Yeah. So, we will see an example. This is a very big program taken, okay, you need not write the entire program in the exam, you can just give a few examples then and there, okay, yeah, now, as I said, we have three kinds of blocks, one is a default block, and look at this guys, uh, here, how do we identify the three different blocks, they are identified using a number by name block number so for default block we have given a number 0 for c data block we have given a number 1 and for c bl case we have given a number 2 okay yeah now look at this what did i say default block contains all the instructions that are executable right so from this 0 right from this 0 till this 0 you can see that all these instructions are executable right and every first block starts with address 0, 0, 0, 0. See, for example, this is the first default block and it is started at address 0, 0, 0, 0. Here we have the first C data block. Okay, it has started at 0, 0, 0, 0. Here we have the first CBLKS block which has started at 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, and you can see here in C data block we have data areas which are less in length. And here in CBL case block, we see data area which is larger, okay. So, this is how we categorize uh, instructions into default block or C data block or CBL case block. This is a continuation of the program, guys, yeah. Uh, in the previous slide, you had seen there are uh, a de a default block, C data block and CBL case block, right. Each started at 0, 0, 0, 0. Now, you will have... The second default block which starts at 0027 and then you have a second C data block which starts at 0006. Yeah. Now here you will have you have the third default block which starts at address 004D. 
and then you have the third C data block which starts at address 0007. Okay, so here in this particular program, we have three default blocks, three C data block and one C B L C K block. Okay, now uh, how you generate object code in the previous programs that you have seen using pass1 and pass2. Similarly, here also we have a way of creating object code using pass1 and pass2. So, let me brief you about the uh, steps in pass1. Okay. So, initially in pass1, you will have to maintain a separate LOCCTR table for each of the blocks. So, this is for the default block. This is for the data block clear okay and this is for the other block which is cl i'll just write it as a c b l c okay now see here this is l o c for uh, the default block and this is for the first block which is data block and this is for the um b l c k block okay now as i said each of the first block starts at address 0000, zero, zero, zero. Now, the second default block starts at, if you go through the previous uh, slide, you know that the second, the, uh, the second um, default block starts at 0027 and the third default block, see this is a third default block, right? So, it starts at 0040. So, what do you think is this address? This address is nothing but where the default block stops okay that is before you jump into some other block you will have to load the ending address of the default block see for example where do we end here right 0063 but this is not the ending see if you consider this instruction which is rseb you know that the length of rseb is 3 so if you add 3 to 0063 it gives you a value 0066 coming to data block so as i said every block starts with 0000 now if you see the address of the first uh, data block which is 0000, second data block is 0006, third data block is has uh, it is shown here, it is 0007. So how do you know which is the ending address? See, look at this guys. See here, what happens is, see you know what is this constant, okay? What is the length of this constant? If you if you have gone through my previous videos of SICXE, you will know that the length of this constant is 1. So, you will have to add 1 to A which gives you B. Similarly, for the last block, the starting address is always going to be 0, 0, 0, 0. So, now if you go to the previous slide, you will know that the uh, um, ending of uh, the last block is at uh, 1000 ok so this is what you need to keep uh, ready in the pass one that is for each of the block we need to have a hello cctr table i hope this is clear ok so i'll just go through the same so a separate location counter is maintained for each of the program block as i said before you jump into some other block you'll have to save the lockctr value at the beginning of a block it is always set to zero okay and then uh, you'll have to assign each label and address relative to the start of the block here okay now look at this for the blocks also we have um, and we also need to know that which uh, block or uh, uh, number uh, a particular um, symbol should belong to it. So, all this information is also maintained in the SimTab table. Okay. So, for block also we have an information for default block it's, its number is 0, C data block it is 1, C BLKS it is uh, 2. As you have uh, seen um, in the previous uh, slide, okay. let me just go to the previous slide, see here guys. Remember, LO, the first block has ended at 0066. So, its length is 0066. The length of the second block is 000B. The length of the third block is 1000. So, the same value is taken here. Okay. So, just write the length of each of the blocks. Okay. 0066, 000B and then 1000. Okay. Now, we know that the default starts at 0 because it is placed first, right? So, 0, 0, 0, 0. Now, here the default address is 0, 0, 0, 0. Now, you add it to the length, 
you get the address of the next book uh, next block that is the address of the c data uh, relative to the program is going to be 0066 there in the previous one we had uh, categorized the blocks individually right so their addresses were different right now with respect to a pro 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 program if you consider default starts at 0000 and c data will start at 0066 if you add 0066 to 000 b then you will get to know that the third block which is CBLKS starts at 0071 okay so this is information about the blocks it is their addresses with relative to the program and the length of each of the blocks yeah, this is pass one now coming to pass two you know that what happens in pass two in pass two we try to create object codes right so if you have to create object codes what should you do there is a point here you have to calculate the address for each of the symbol relative to the start of the object program by adding two things okay one is the location of that symbol relative to the start of its block i'll take an example and explain don't worry okay and then then add it to the starting address of this block so if you now remember in the previous slide you have to remember certain things from the previous slide that is default starts at 0000 c data starts at 0066 and c blk starts at 0071 okay so remember this now here there is an instruction lda length you will have to find the object code I am sure you all know that the first three will not change because this is with respect to the opcode and the flags and those will remain the same but then the way of finding the target uh, uh, address uh, and the displacement uh, is different because we have concept of program blo blocks over here right yeah now let us um, check where this LDA length belongs to LDA length belongs to C data block okay now just go through the code here clear as you can see here there is LDA length don't consider that LDA length belongs to 0 no a length is a operand and uh, to which block does length belong to length belongs to block number 1 which is uh, C data block right okay now now if you consider so it belongs to C data block right yes now so what did I say how do you find the uh, address of length you will have to add two things that is the uh, where does this length label how far it is from its block okay so this length label is 0003 relative to block 1 okay so that is this value now this is the address of length relative to the program so how do you find relative to the program you have to add 0003 is relative to the block number that is from um, uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, that individually if you consider blocks okay so this length okay so block 1 this particular length label is at a distance 0003 that is it is relative to block 1 now relative to program is where this particular um, label is relative to the program so we very well know that block 1 starts at 0066 relative to the program so you will have to add 0003 and then get the value relative to the program which is 0069 so this is the one that is relative to the program okay so you will have to add the starting uh, the value that is relative to the block and then the starting address of the program so you get uh, the value that is relative to program okay so now this is the target address right guys so the, you know the formula for displacement is nothing but target address minus PC. So now we know what target address is which is nothing but 0069. How do we know PC? PC is nothing but the instruction that is next to this instruction in block 0. So if you go back to the uh, program you will find that the next instruction is at location 0009. So what should you do guys? You should subtract the 
TC from the target address which gives you 0060 and the last three bits are taken it is 060. So this is how you generate object codes for program block. I hope I am clear to you. And uh, in the object uh, program, the order in which the object program is created is totally different, okay. So, you might be wondering uh, if the order is totally different, will it affect the loading of uh, the program into the main memory? No, this is not going to be affected because the loader will very well take care of uh, ordering or loading the uh, um, instructions in the right order in the main memory, okay. So, now here you can see this is how our source program was okay and c data and c block that is um, um, this one this had data area right okay so this is the first default block first c data and first c blks this way data areas so we didn't have an object code for uh, this so only these are taken here clear yeah so this is in the same order this is also in the same order that is i mean the order is uh, um, different over here but then when we load it onto the main memory the all the default uh, will be loaded one after the other that is in the ascending uh, order that is 0000, 0027, 0040 and you very well know that c data block uh, starts at 0066 and then uh, the next c data block starts at 0060 and 0071 and 1071 this has to be 1071 i hope this is clear to you guys this is i have explained this completely to make you understand what program blocks is but this much is not expected in the exam you can write in a very simple way by showing that there are three types of blocks and the block numbers assigned to it and what is the directive used and how their um, uh, locations are calculated and what is the structure of the LOCCTR that is for each of the blocks you need to maintain separate LOCCTR and what is the information with respect to blocks that's it you need to mention and it is given in a very easy way in the notes you just have to study that but then if you want to understand it in a deeper sense then you understand through this video otherwise this topic is very easy to be written from the exam point of view i hope i'm i was clear to you okay thank you in the next video we will see the fifth feature of uh, machine uh, independent uh, which is control section okay thank you